remember now, this whole MER project was predicated on the idea that we'd be able to use Mars Pathfinder, not just the concept, but the design, the detailed design, because that's where all the work is. Suddenly, the idea of using Pathfinder design started to crumble. Oh. The concepts are old, but at least the ideas of the design are the same, but you don't fly ideas, you fly hardware. There was no strategic plan after that. It was just, you know, take this hill, <laughs> take the next hill, you know, take the next hill. You gotta believe it's gonna happen or, or it's just like, why am I doing this? It, it kind of, you just have to sort of feed on that confidence. So it's a group. Uh, psychosis, I guess, is probably the best way to describe it. So, <laughs> three, two, one, engine start and liftoff of the Delta II rocket carrying the spirit from Earth to planet Mars. And load relief kick rate is in, vehicles responding. Vehicles recovering very nicely from the liftoff transients. Well, response is good. Three, two, engine start. Zero and liftoff of the Delta rocket with opportunity, a chance to explore and unlock the secrets of our neighboring planet. The transients at liftoff. Engine position looks good. We had gone through a rather stressful week leading up to landing. One was that we had had a global dust storm. What should we do about modeling this? How do we know that our system's gonna work? But what's the other thing? Well, much to our surprise, after months and months and months of successful uh, round-the-clock testing, we finally, finally find that there's some failures that are occurring. We had three failures. We said, well, is it fluke? What's going on? What we've discovered is that the software is trying to, to turn on timers that count down to firing pyrotechnic defense that say opens up the parachute or inflates the airbag fires the rocket or cuts a cable we we're finding that the software wasn't getting around to doing it it tried but the hardware didn't work and there was a problem between the hardware and software that we did not know about until just two days before landing in which case we'll have a failure guaranteed failure we're pretty nervous about this Show us your uncertainty. Show us your estimate of your unknown unknowns. But don't try to do Well, the first thing that comes to our minds was that we can manually do it by sending commands from Earth to bypass the, 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 the limitations that were present during landing to make those pyrotechnic devices go. It was one of those, you know, there's a probability it's not going to do it. Probability is probably very low but we have this way to get on a racket by sending this real-time command, but we really haven't tested that approach, and so how do you want to play? Flight nav. Go nav. The Doppler signature indicates crew stage separation has occurred. Copy that. All systems are go for entry, descent, and landing. We are currently six minutes from landing at the GOSEP crater in the southern hemisphere of Mars. MGS is green and Mach is ready to record. Atmospheric entry, five, four, three, two, one, mark. The vehicle has now hit the top of the Martian atmosphere, moving at a speed of 12,192 miles per hour. Downrange distance to landing site is 437 miles. You're going through an event like that where everything that you worked for for so many years is on the line. Um, we're, I mean, we had no control. Current altitude, 45,000 feet. Current velocity, 1,356 miles per hour. Expected parachute deploy in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, mark. We are awaiting confirmation the parachute has deployed. Parachute was detected. Lander separation event has been detected. Spacecraft reporting lander is separated. We expect that we will lock, radar will lock on the ground in approximately five seconds from now. Current altitude 8,000 feet. Moving at a speed of 173 miles per hour, we are near our terminal velocity. 
spacecraft reporting that the radar is in lock and we have a good solution on the ground. Expected retro rocket ignition on my mark, mark. Awaiting confirmation from the spacecraft that retro rocket ignition has occurred. At this point in time, we should be on the ground. minutes 37 seconds from atmospheric entry still awaiting signal that we are on the ground stand by in fact it took me a while to even believe the signal was really there when Polly was saying Rob Rob there's a signal I go where show me show me I don't see it yet <laughs> I think my main reaction was, was relief. I think it's probably the main, the main thing. It's like, oh, we, we made it. The electronic tone sent from the rover indicates that the rover has landed base pedal down, which means right side up. It was uh, a thrill beyond thrills, not just actually witnessing what was taking place, but to be able to experience that through the eyes of these amazing individuals who had put their blood, sweat, and tears for this kind of exploration, which is so incredible. When those first pictures came back, everyone was so overwhelmed, and they were so much earlier than had been anticipated. I've always sensed, even during difficult times here at JPL, always a sense of optimism. And I go back to that great uh, line that if you don't take risks, you're not going to learn anything. And that's why this risk-taking is so critical to our future, to improving the quality of life for us, and again, doing everything that we possibly can to, to uh, to inspire future generations to be as innovative. We're going to and then we're going to The thing with the first images was, we're safe. It's working. 